Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm Dr. Arnold Nirenberg. It's my privilege to be here with you. Truly, I'm grateful. I'm 79 years of age. I'll be 80 this May. So I bring to you all the experiences of a lifetime to present this to you. And I've been a licensed clinical psychologist for over 46 years. So I would bring to bear all my clinical practice, clinical research, and life experiences to present to you a very important topic that I hope will have a good effect on you for the rest of your lives. The title is Toxic Food, Toxic Air, Toxic Thoughts, The Poison and the Cure. Toxic Food, Toxic Air, Toxic Thoughts, The Poison and the Cure. First, let me say that I'm a licensed clinical psychologist. I'm not an MD. I'm not formally trained to talk about anything about nutrition or even the air for that matter. Uh, but so this is all based on my personal study when I expand outside the realm of psychology. People have the knowledge when they're eating toxic foods, really. The average person knows that if they're uh, smoking uh, or if they're eating Twinkies, people know. If they're drinking a, you know, a Coca-Cola, they know uh, it's, it's toxic for them. But they just figure, well, either they think there's no harm or they feel, well, we all have to die someday, or whatever's being justified. The toxic foods that are just causing early deaths, filling our hospitals, a massive epidemic of obesity, which makes people prone to every illness there is, cardiovascular disease, cancer, diabetes, arthritis, Alzheimer's. And it's based on, I mean, the toxic foods that we're eating. So deal with that to detoxify. You want to have plant-based foods as much as possible, particularly broccoli, which is like the king of the vegetables that actually helps fight cancer. They certainly you want to keep to organic. You want broccoli, like I said, fiber. And to detoxify yourself, you particularly want to detoxify your organs, such as your liver. You can take the, the food supplement milk thistle. That'll help detoxify it. Also, if you start the morning with a warm cup of water and you squeeze one-fourth lemon into it, and you take a pinch of cayenne pepper, a little bit of olive oil, and you drink that every morning. It'll detoxify your liver and your gallbladder. So you want to just, and then of course, if you want to uh, uh, have meats or any food for that matter, preferably organic, which has less insecticides and pesticides and whatever on there, and and, and also you want foods that are not been in, like meats or eggs that are hormone free where they haven't had a lot of antibiotics or in terms of meats a lot of steroids as well as antibiotics you know the hormones injected in and preferably grass-fed because that's what the genetic makeup was for you know, back thousands of years ago was to eat grass giving grains is is foreign to to the animals of today so you want to keep away from processed foods as much as possible. You want foods, if you can't walk out and get it from a garden or from a tree, a fruit, uh, uh, it, it, it's an unnatural combination of foods that doesn't exist in nature, that's a good sign to stay away from that as much as possible. Now, you also want to be careful about the breads, the flours. One of the best breads you can have is Ezekiel bread, which is sprouted grains. Uh, the white breads that are around, uh, which are delicious, uh, they're processed and more pro. In fact, the more pro it'll raise your blood sugar level. But when you get when you having certain foods like white rice, white potatoes, white bread, uh, there's no difference between a fistful of white rice and a fistful of sugar. It turns into glucose. So you want to be keeping the glucose level down. You want to keep your insulin resistance minimized. A good herb to do that is berberine or bitter melon, banana leaf. There's some natural things you could be taking, as well as exercise, which will also help reduce your blood sugar level. And certainly the king of the fruit is pomegranates. It actually prevents various cancers. As a matter of fact, if you have a, a, a tumor, prostate or a breast tumor in particular, it'll, it'll help shrink it and spread the spreading will spread less rapidly. There's a lot of research data on that, a lot, a lot of research on that. So the foods can be toxic, 
or the foods can also be medicines, so different herbs. Uh, many foods uh, have a, a medical application. I mean, there's so many healthy herbs that we could be having. Uh, the, the, the mints or, uh, like I was saying, with the, the berberine, which has been around for thousands of years. There's so many that are put into supplements uh, and the teas, which are powerful antioxidant, the green tea particularly, but also the black tea. So you want to you want to minimize how many toxic foods you're having while maximizing the intake of medicinal foods. Now we go to the air. People are breathing toxic air, especially here in Southern California, but anywhere. Toxic air. The air becomes toxic through um, if there are fires in the area, and what gets and even if they're not fires, the toxic elements are coarse particles, fine fine particles, ozone. Now, you certainly want to, there are meters that you have. I use a, 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 a air quality index I mean, to find out the AQI, and it'll tell you how the air is. And on this meter, anything under 50 is good, 50 to 100 is moderate, and they say, you know, don't go into a lot of exercise if you're, if you're somehow compromised. And above that gets dangerous and hazardous. You want to know what kind of air you're breathing uh, very, very important. And certainly in your home, you want to have a HEPA filter to detoxify the air. Uh, it's very powerful. It takes out even a level of microns. It takes out all kinds of dust and particles and, and cat hairs, everything. And, uh, so, and it's good to have a HEPA filter vacuum, which will then get it off the carpets and off the floors. And then you have a pygmy day palm. This detoxifies the air. It'll actually take the formaldehyde out of the air. So if you have the right, and this one's easy to maintain. It's very, uh, very hardy. Uh, it's, it's not labor intensive to keep it alive. So you want to be, and then you're also going to have an app on your phone to find what is the air quality in your area. But the good thing about your own meter is you get to see what it is really in your home and in your immediate neighborhood, which could be quite different than the reading you're getting on an app. Or if you go to Alexa or Siri and ask, this is more precise targeted for your area. You want to know that. You know, when, when we had the fires here, it was actually hazardous. Probably like smoking three, four packs of cigarettes a day to be out there very much. So you don't want to be out there walking, sprinting. Uh, preferably you want to be out in good air or just getting a little bit into the moderate range. That you, might, that you want to keep it to that. So that's talking about the toxic food and toxic air. So this just, these, if you just have those two, you're already prone towards so many illnesses, so many illnesses. Compromise your immune system, compromise your organs, your lungs, your liver, your heart. You drive up the cholesterol, and you drive up your triglycerides, especially if you're eating a lot of saturated fats. And you can bring down your triglycerides with fish oil and omega-7s. Uh, with the research out of Harvard indicating omega-7s will bring down triglycerides and work synergistically with the fish oil. So you take the omega-3s, the omega-3s is in the fish oil. It's just awesome. In fact, if you take one of them three times a day, it has the antidepressant effects and also cut down the inflammation. When you're eating toxic foods, you're more likely to become have inflammation, which is CRP. When you get a blood work up, you want to measure your CRP, C-reactive protein. You want to keep that Definitely under three, but you want to bring it under one, and you want to even get it less than 0.1, less than 0.2 is ideal. That's optimal. You want to know the difference between normal and optimal. Under 0.2 is really optimal. And certainly, uh, you want to keep your triglycerides under 105, under 100, and the fish oil and the omega-3s and omega-7s will, will help with that enormously. And you don't want to have to go to synthetic drugs like uh, the statin drugs, which, which can also bring down your triglycerides and your cholesterol. If you have your cholesterol under 150, you don't want to get it too much low. But if it's under that it, and you're keeping the LDL the, the under, uh, under 70, it's impossible to build up plaque, just impossible. So you want to keep that low. Uh, and uh, you want to keep your blood sugar optimal between 75 and 85. They say if your blood sugar is under... 100 is normal, but if it's 95, you're more prone to Alzheimer's. If it's over 85, you're more prone to early death. So you want to keep it between 75 and 85. Certainly, you want your A1C, which is a measure over three months, under uh, 
under 5.6, but it's closer to 5, the better. Even under 5 is really good. It means your insulin resistance is down. It means the insulin can bring the, the, the glucose into the cells and, and go through the receptor sites. So there, there we've talked about the toxic food and the toxic air. You want to detoxify it. Told you some of the ways to detoxify yourself, your foods, and the air. A lot of people don't pay attention to that. There's a big attention to foods now, but you must pay attention to the air that you're getting. It's super important. Now we go to toxic thoughts. Here is where I'm a licensed clinical psychologist. I'm an expert. I've, de I've developed a very powerful system, which I call mental detoxification, which is part of my honor therapy, also called the Nuremberg Legacy Therapy Approach. So now there are two types of thoughts, two types. The thoughts that pop into your mind and do not define who you are. When you get an angry thought, it stays in you, and that's toxic. You're more prone to, people are more prone to uh, heart attacks and strokes if you have chronic anger. That's the toxicity of your thoughts. The thoughts that pop into your mind but do not define who you are. It's based on your genetics, family upbringing, societal norms. You have no responsibility for that at all. You get an angry thought, you want to tell somebody off, you want to slap somebody. No problem, it just popped in your mind. You're not acting on it, it came to you, it's toxic. You no know, responsibility for it. You didn't choose it. Now, the second type of thoughts, type two, is the ones you choose. You can choose any thought you want, and I'm going to demonstrate it to you right now. Right now, and what I'm about to tell you only humans can do, and a six-year-old child could do this as well. We're going to do this now. Have a pleasant memory. Think of something from today, somebody that you saw that you like or love or a food you ate that you really enjoy. Take a moment and do that. Now I know you did it naturally, rapidly, easily. And look what you did. You chose the polarity. It was positive, it wasn't negative, it wasn't neutral. And he shows the time dimension. It wasn't the future. It wasn't the present. It was the past. That's the volition. That's the great power for mental detoxification. The second category of thoughts, the ones you choose, you just did it. I'll give you another example. Be very specific. Have the thought, I wish you well, three times. Have that thought three times right now. Again. I know you did it naturally, effortlessly, rapidly. A six-year-old could do that. Again, only humans could do that. Other species have problem solving, stimulus response, emotion. They cannot choose their thoughts. We can through the power of volition. This is an enormous power. I would like to have you appreciate that about yourselves and start teaching your children to do this simple exercise and have them understand the enormous power that they have in terms of the second class of thoughts, which is the thoughts you choose. So when you get a negative thought, you never fight it. Mm -mm. It's more powerful than any positive, honorable thought that you have. You balance it. So I just like to tell you I want to slap that person. I wish you well. Yeah, but it's not the first time he did I really want to say something nasty. Yeah, I wish you well. Now, that's your responsibility is to then balance it with an honorable thought. That's part of the detoxification, the mental detoxification process. What happens is even though the negativity doesn't disappear right away, it will come less often with less duration and less intensity. That's the good news. So now I want to teach you the, the, a series of thoughts that will be powerful for mental detoxification. Very, very powerful. Now you need to understand that your identity, the thoughts that pop in your mind do not define who you are. That's not your identity. You're more reflective of the thought you choose to have the second class of thoughts. Okay, so now I'm going to give you the four most powerful detoxifiers in the world. And I call them the four commandments of honor because you're commanding the honor that's already within you to arise into thought, word, and action. Here they are. I wish you well. I take full responsibility for co-creating my reality and my problems. I'm grateful for the power I gave from hardship. And then one of two. Either I seek always to serve my highest values or if you believe in God as I do, God, your wish is my only wish. 
those are the four commandments of honor. Those are the mental detoxifiers. They're not necessarily exciting to repeat. We want to do it three times a day. They're not long enough to be boring, but remember, repetition is preparation for application. And that's the payoff, is the application. But then you want to be, take a pledge that you're going to do it all your life. You're basically you're saying, I want to mentally detoxify myself for all the days of my life. So here's the pledge. As a disciple of honor, I pledge myself for all the days of my life to the four commandments of honor. And I'll teach them to those I love. I'll repeat them every morning, afternoon, and evening, and I'll listen to myself recite them. And I tell people, welcome to the brotherhood, welcome to the sisterhood. That is an immediate detoxification. In fact, people, no matter how despondent they were, 90, over 95% feel good right away. Over 95% feel more hope right away. And over 92% feel more meaning in their lives immediately. And I've interviewed over 1,100 people who have taken that pledge. That's how awesome that is. An immediate mental detoxification. As soon as you take the pledge, you're doing this three times a day. Then you want to follow that with what I call a bridge, which maximizes the probability you're going to apply it to situations. Because when you're in a situation, you may, for, you may forget to apply it. It could happen. Things take you, they come out of left field, they take you off guard. So the bridge is, what's the most honorable thing to think, say, and do? So you say that with the four commandments of honor. And then you say it in any situation you're in. So you go, I wish you well. I take full responsibility for co-creating my reality and my problems. I'm grateful for the power I gain from hardship. God, your wish is my only wish. That's eight seconds. Now the bridge is four seconds. What's the most... What's the most honorable thing to think, say, and do? Whole things 12 seconds, 36 seconds a day. Very good investment of your time to mentally detoxify yourself. Because what happens is, if you have to, when you're having toxic thoughts, it will compromise your psychological immune system, which in turn will compromise your physical immune system. You don't want that happening. You compromise your physical immune system by causing stress, which we know uh, has deleterious effects on all, all areas of health. That's a fact. We know that. Now, then we have, these are two more really powerful detoxifiers. We have what I call the two derivatives of the warrior's commandment of honor. The warrior's commandment of honor, I've named each of them, is I'm grateful for the power I gain from hardship. That's how I define a warrior. A warrior seeks to gain power from the hardship. But there are two derivatives. One is I'll come back stronger than ever. So let's say you're sick or you're down or you're having a problem and that's toxic, the kind of thoughts you're having, but then, but then you balance it. You say, you know, I'll come back stronger than ever. Or if you don't feel comfortable saying, you can go, I hope to come back stronger than ever. I'll come back stronger than ever. And then the second derivative is, what's the best true story I can tell myself about this problem? Whatever bad story you have going on, and there's some terrible tragedies that happen, deaths, medical situations, legal situations, emotional, monetary, everything. They're real, and they're true, and can be even tragic. It's only half the story. The other half is what's the gain? What's the good that came out of it? That's key. What's the best true story I can tell myself about this situation? So the whole system is based on, th on three underlying principles. Enshrined within your deepest struggle is the seed of your nobility, your destiny, your legacy, and your honor. It's fed by two tributaries. All things work for good for those who seek the good. And hardship makes me strong and I'm grateful. That's the underlying. These are the concepts to mentally detoxify ourselves. So there you have the two derivatives. Then you add to that the law of respect. Extreme respect always. Now you're moving to really powerful mental detoxification. Powerful. Which has a psychological, spiritual, and physical effect. Which is awesome. Then you have the law of interpersonal harmony because you can get a lot of negative thoughts about somebody which will toxify you, poison you. Here's the cure. I refuse to react to your negativity. I'll only respond to your vulnerability, because we know for a fact that whenever anybody's angry, in a rage, aloof, always they feel vulnerable. They feel hurt, humiliated, neglected, abandoned, 
inferior, jealous, overwhelmed, always. So like a two-year-old comes up to you and goes, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. You don't say, well, I hate you too, you brat, you poop in your diaper, you hate me, heck, I hate you. You don't say that. Yo, come here, Mio, come here, I love you, sweetheart. Mm, come here, darling. And when we do that, why? Because you respond to the vulnerability. You're responding to the vulnerability. So it doesn't matter if somebody's 2, 22, 102, 122, doesn't matter. You want to respond to the vulnerability. So that's the law of interpersonal harmony. Then there's the law of intrapersonal harmony. I refuse to react to my own negativity. I'll only respond to my vulnerability. When you're negative, you're angry, you're negative. Look for your vulnerability. Respond to that. Don't keep feeding the anger. Look for the vulnerability. So that's, this is all powerful mental detoxification. Then you can take a pledge to become, this is an advanced level, a devotee of honor, where you're agreeing to repeat the Supremacy of Honor Code three times a day. Here's the Supremacy of Honor Code. Honor before pride, honor before anger, honor before sex, honor before money, honor before fear, honor before everything, honor before life itself. And the pledge to be a devotee of honor is this. As a devotee of honor, I pledge myself all the days of my life to the supremacy of honor code. And I'll bring it to the world for a more just society. A devotee of honor. Now, when you, when you go, when you're saying honor before everything, that includes honor before cravings, honor before ego, honor before vanity, honor before loneliness, whatever, every, that's a very big category to put everything else that you want to put honor before. But you're putting it before everything, and when you're going honor before life itself. So this is the full system, it's not that complicated, of mental detoxification. So as you detoxify your thoughts, and by the way, if you come down with any illness, it's a medical fact that your prognosis is greatly enhanced if you're optimistic, and all of this actually increases hope and optimism. All of the, this whole mental detoxification system, which enhances your prognosis from any physical illness you have. Even if you're going to have a surgery, there's a better outcome if you have optimism. That's a fact. Well, it's been my pleasure to present to you toxic foods, toxic airs, toxic thoughts, the poison, and the cure.